This is the Tobago House of Assembly's post-executive council media briefing for week ending August 25, 2012. The media were given updates in the areas of sport, education and finance. Assistant Secretary Huey Cadet begins with the nation's success at the Olympics. As you may have um, been aware, the, the Tobago House of Assembly um, would have um, had two representatives at the Olympics um, in, in the persons of myself and uh, Mr. Jared Franklin, um, the coach um, Jared Franklin and a member of staff of the um, Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport. Um, we would have also provided um, assistance um, to the families of the athletes uh, from Tobago who would have qualified um, for the, the games in, in the persons of um, Rene Kual, Josan Lucas, Kellyanne Batiste and, and Simoy Hackett. Um, those, those families would have been provided with assistance um, to attend um, the games. Um, let me just, in, in, in general, just give an a overall arching summary of the experience. I think it was indeed a, a fantastic one. Uh, from the perspective, of course, the significance of having the opportunity to, um, to be witness to the performance um, of Trinidad and Tobago and, of course, the, the whole Olympic experience. Um, from a technical um, and a policy perspective, um, I think one of the, the some of the interesting um, observations and um, thing that I was able to make is that one um, coming out of um, the success of um, the, the British team, um, their um, sports development program, in particular it relates to education, they are going to embark on some of the, the programs that we already have. Um, in our schools so that um, some of that includes um, more competitive sports in schools, um, a greater degree of um, teachers, PE teachers, um, coaches within the school programs, some of those things which we have already been doing here in the Tobago House of Assembly. They also recognize the need for participation of um, greater participation of um, young people um, in sports in schools. Again, some of the things that we have been doing for quite some time here in the Tobago House of Assembly so that we have recognized that um, Coming out of that experience, um, we have witnessed the fact that a number of the, the programs and the strategies that we have and policies that we have adopted over the years as the Tobago House Assembly um, are best practices. And of course, that we continue to ensure that those, as we review those policies, that we back it up with investment, that um, they will continue to bear fruit in, in the names of the Kellyanne Batiste, um, the Rene Cowes, the Simoy Hackett, and the Josan Lucas. And of course, we look forward to the other persons who are coming along, like Mark London and the, and the Khadija Williams and, and the Chelsea James, who are um, on the scene. Of, of course, um, we would have, coming out of the success, the, the Tobago House Assembly, would have had a, a function on Monday last where we would have recognized um, our athletes and, and, and their successes. Um, and I would know an announcement, of course, would have been made to, to the extent um, of what those, those level of recognition would be. So I, I would just go into that. Um, besides, of course, the announcements that were made on, on Monday by the Chief Secretary, um, prior to the Olympics, and of course, since then, um, the Assembly would have um, mounted a number of billboards across the island. We would have put up a number of banners at the, the, at the um, ANR um, Robinson International Airport um, highlighting the success of, um, of our athletes. Um, we also recognize the importance of um, the fusion um, and the motivation of our up-and-coming athletes so that at the function on, on Monday, um, last, the, the Carifta, um, the representatives that, who went to Carifta in Bermuda um, this year, Easter this year, would have also been invited to the opportunity to be part of it because we also recognize um, the need to continue to keep um, those pre-elite or those athletes who are about to burst onto the um, elite scene or the world scene, um, to keep them motivated and encourage them to continue to, um, to apply their craft. Um, the assembly, um, as I said, would have had this function on Monday at um, Cafe Coco. Um, unfortunately, um, due to circumstances beyond our control, um, the main guest of honor, um, one of the guests of honor, Lalon, who was on, on the island, was unable to, um, to attend because of his involvement in, um, in the motorcade um, that was being hosted by um, the central government. Um, of course, Rene and um, Josan are 
recovering from um, injuries. Um, Josanne would have had a surgery just prior to the Olympics, and, and Rene would have begun um, rehabilitative treatment after, um, during um, while the Olympics was, was going on. And, 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 and Simoy and, and Kellyanne were scheduled, would not have allowed their, their return at this time. It's our intention to have, at a later date, have those, um, all of those athletes, um, at a time convenient all, um, return for a celebration um, for all of them. Let me, as I said, go into the, some of the, what would have been announced on, on Monday by um, the Honorable Chief Secretary as to the, the, the rewards for our Olympians. Um, for Rene Kuo and um, Josan Lucas, um, both of who would have qualified but were unable to um, participate due to injury, um, $50,000 in, in, in cash. Um, we would also be assisting um, with the costs related to their rehabilitation efforts, and they were both provided with um, commemorative plaques um, with the Special Olympic stamps. For Kellyanne um, and Simoy, uh, both of who um, would have qualified um, for finals, um, we would have um, seventy-five thousand dollars in units and seventy-five thousand dollars in cash, along with that commemorative um, plaque. Um, for Lalon, um, our first Olympic medalist and a double bronze medalist in, in the four hundred um, meter relay and the four hundred um, individual, um, one hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars in in units and three hundred fifty thousand dollars in cash. Um, the commemorative plaque and a plot of land um, to be identified in the coal and estate development. The Assembly of what has also committed to the establishment of a sports development fund in the name of Lalon, uh, with an initial contribution from the Assembly um, to the tune of $1 million. Um, we, of course, would structure this development, um, this sport development fund that would allow the private sector um, to contribute um, and other agencies to contribute to the fund. And of course, the structure is to be set up so that this fund would have the necessary uh, management uh, for its disbursement and the criteria by which um, persons may access the funding. It is our, um, the, the assembly is committed to match um, dollar for dollar any contribution from private or corporate um, um, organizations or individuals. So that is, as I said, a list of the, um, the the rewards and the, what how we chose to recognize um, the Olympians. We felt um, that both from those who just that, that just qualified, we felt that it was important that um, they be recognized um, for the effort and the significance of qualifying um, for for the Olympic Games. And we also went to the extreme end in terms of um, Lalon, in terms of his um, the significance of his of his effort, um, in terms as it relates to to Rene and. Josan, we've recognized that they have continued to, um, to excel on, and, and to represent Tobago and Trinidad and Tobago on the world stage very significantly. And we felt it was important that the assembly at this point in time um, offer some support and assistance in ensuring that their rehabilitation goes smoothly and then they can support it. I think um, one area I omitted to, to, rem to indicate with regards to support for Lala and Gordon is that we'd also be um, provide refunding the, f the family of um, Lalon to the tune of $50,000 as it relates to the expenses that they would have incurred um, to attend um, the, the games. Assistant Secretary Cadet shared some upcoming sporting events, with one being a part of Trinidad and Tobago's 50th anniversary independence celebrations. As part of the 50th um, anniversary of our independence, um, there are a number of activities that will be hosted by the Department of Sport, um, and they include either in conjunction with um, the, the central government or with a number of other stakeholders. Um, the first of which is the, uh, a match, a T20 match, um, that will involve a Tobago 11 and a and the Bangladesh T national T20 team um, who is preparing for um, the T20 World Cup. And this, this match is carded for Wednesday, um, 5th September. It has been done, in, in, of course, in collaboration with the Cricket Association in Tobago and All Sport um, Promotion. And we'll see, of course, um, the Bangladeshis here in, um, in, in, in preparation um, for their, their T20 World Cup um, campaign. They will play a match here along with um, one or two matches in, in Trinidad. 
Um, we'll also begin um, a, cycle, a youth cycling f festival um, for boys and girls between the ages of 5 and 17. This is, is scheduled to begin on Sunday night, September in Plymouth. Um, and it's to be done as a lead up to the Tobago International Cycling Classic. So we, it is our intention as a forerunner and in a bit to build enthusiasm and awareness to the International Cycling Classic to have these four weekends of um, cycling for, um, for kids or juniors. Um, other venues that are, um, that are proposed include um, Roxborough, Canaan Bonacord, and, and Mason Hall. On Sunday, September 9th at Plymouth, we'd also be hosting in conjunction um, with the Ministry National Security, the Tobago Relay Festivals. Um, this is a one-day event uh, with, an, with various relays. Um, it is open to age groups from the varying communities, representing teams from various communities um, from 12 um, and up, and also 60 and over. So there will be teams for different categories. Um, there are going to be ma relays for masters categories, relays for juniors um, at, at different levels. With the release of CAPE and CXC results, Education Secretary Whitney Alfred gave a breakdown, beginning with the CAPE results. The overall pass rate this year was 85%, whereas the overall pass rate last year was 89.2%. So you can see right away there was a slight uh, decrease in the overall pass rate. I will let you have copies of these. Um, I have copies that you can have, right? So I'm saying that the overall pass rate last year was 89.2. This year was 85%. Uh, CAPE is done in two units, units one and unit two. The overall unit performance in 2012 was 85.9%. The overall unit performance in 2011 was 892 In terms of the unit two, the overall performance unit two in 2012 was 92%. Overall performance in 2011 was 944 uh, In this year's examination, there is a total of 95 grade ones compared to 105 grade one in last year's examination. So this year we have 95 grade one. Uh, last year we had 105 grade ones. This year we have a total of 192 grade two compared with 187 grade two last year. So this year we have a few more grade two than last year. Uh, the overall male student pass rate in 2012 is 81.3 percent. Uh, last year was 85.3, so they could see that there is a slight decrease from 85.3 last year to 81.3 this year. The overall female student pass rate in 2012 uh, is 86.9. Last year was 85%. So there is a slight increase this year in terms of the girls. So the girls seem to be outdoing our, our boys. Last year was 85%. This year, 86.9. So there was a slight marginal difference in terms of what obtained last year and this year. In terms of the pass rate by school, last year, bishops, in terms of percentage, 98.1, this year 96.2. Goodwood Secondary, 84.1, this year 86.4, marginal increase. Signal Hill, 85.1 last year, this year 80.1. Speyside Secondary, 73.3 last year, this year 80.1, some increase here. Scarborough Sec, 69.1, this year 67.1. In the case of the CXC exam, or CSEC, Caribbean Secondary Education um, exam, last year, 31 subjects were attempted. This year, 33 subjects were attempted. Uh, in terms of the number of students that entered, Last year, 1,058 students were entered, 576 female, 487 male. 
This year, 908 students were entered, 466 female, 492 male. So there seemed to be a decrease in the number of students who attempted or who were entered for the examination. And perhaps these are some questions you may want to ask. Why is it that you have fewer students entering for the exam this year than last year? In terms of the grade listing, um, last year, 2011, you had 446 students obtaining grade one. This year, you have 495. So an increase in the number of students who received grade one this year over last year. Last year, you had 1,118 students obtaining grade one, not sorry, grade two. This year, you have 1,024 students obtaining grade two. Last year, 1,493 students got grade three. This year, 1,343 got grade three. Grade four, last year, 1,149. This year, 1,037. Last year, grade five, 811. This year, 855. Grade six, 101. Last year, um, 125. This year, ungraded. That is to say, you couldn't mark them. You had 57 last year. This year, you have 128. Secretary Alfred then reported on the school repairs program. The school repair program is progressing very nicely. Um, I visited some of the schools on Monday and a Tuesday. A few of the contractors have asked for additional time to finish their work. And um, in terms of the time frame, it is very likely that they are going to finish in time for the reopening of school. Um, work is progressing nicely at some schools like Castara, <coughs> Blackhawk, uh, Delaford, RC, um, Speyside, and one or two other schools where I <coughs> visited yesterday and um, on Monday. We at the Division of Education, Youth Affairs, and Sports are trying our best to deal with the many problems which Speyside High School is experiences as well as the other secondary schools. I can speak for Scarborough Secondary. We are attempting to deal with some of the several problems that Scarborough Secondary is experiencing. I have been to um, Miss Noel Government second, Secondary and repairs are going on nicely at Miss Noel Government Secondary. Uh, hopefully, by the time school reopens, I think it's on the 3rd of September, most if not all of these repairs will be completed. Moving on to finance, Dr. Ansem London addressed the reason for the delayed construction of new police stations in Tobago. Quite recently, the Minister for National Security had certain pronouncements to make about the construction of um, police stations in Trinidad and Tobago, or I should say more particularly in Trinidad, because in his presentation, Minister Warner never mentioned anything about what was going to happen in Tobago, the two police stations at Grange and at Roxborough. Subsequent to his statement, the Chief Secretary wrote or wrote to him concerning the fact that, well, here you are making these grand statements about Trinidad, what is happening to Tobago, in particular the, the, the stations at Roxborough and Old Grange. Now, bearing in mind that action was um, taken and contracts were awarded prior to this new um, government taking charge of Trinidad and Tobago, May 2010. The minister has since replied, acknowledging the fact that contracts were previously issued for, for both Roxborough and for, for Old Grange. And I think it's an important that this information gets into the public domain because what it does, it confirms Tobago's or the Tobago House of Assembly's position that 
while work had proceeded to a level where those, those um, police stations should have been started, it is the government of Trinidad and Tobago that in fact pulled back on the contracts and why today, why today that um, these buildings are not, have not been started, let alone completed. There is information in here of Mr. Warner's plans for the next several months with respect to this, and this too will be made available to you. Finance Secretary Dr. London gave an update on the Young Professionals Opportunities Program. In September 2011, the Assembly agreed, the Executive Council agreed to a Young Professionals Opportunities Program. This program is broadly based and it doesn't carry the stigma of professionalism, meaning people with PhD degrees in some esoteric sort of thing. In February of this year, we held a youth forum at um, Mount, uh, Mount Irving. In June of this year, June 25th, I believe, in the budget statement, we indicated what was going to happen to the youth um, program and youth employment. And I'm very pleased to say that today the, the executive, I received a confirmed copy of the executive council note on the way forward. One of the first things that we are going to do in this YES program, and I wouldn't go into the details of it, we will talk about that at some other time. Broadly speaking, the, the, the YES program involves an expenditure of about $23 million, and the employment as rapidly as possible, bearing in mind the demographics and the labor force statistics that we have, the employment of at least 400 young people to fill various positions in various places, uh, both locally, domestically, and internationally, to Begonians over the, 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 the next period. I say internationally because one of the things the program does involve is a series of placements of Tobagonians at international institutions, particularly those bearing in economics and finance, such as the bank. When I say the bank, I mean the World Bank, the fund, the International Monetary Fund, and other agencies in which Trinidad and Tobago is a member. I must indicate also that this is a matter that was raised in my recent meeting with the Minister of Finance, Mr. Hawaii, in Port of Spain. Now, that is a confirmation of the note and the many aspects of it. There are about seven or so initiatives in there. And I guess I say, I say again, this is flowing out of the budget statement that I made in June. Now, on Monday, on, on Tuesday, I'm sorry, on the 28th, the program is going to be launched at uh, Mount Irvin. We expect a very large and very broad cross section of the youth in Tobago. It's going to be done managed in a sense by the Division of Finance, but it's really a, an assembly-wide project. And this starts at, on Monday, on Tuesday, I'm sorry, at Mount Irvin with um, a presentation by the Chief Secretary and the actual launch of the program and another subset of the program that has to do with technology-based development. Let me be absolutely clear. We do not discriminate in the program, or the program and its various elements does not discriminate when it talks about professional. Just as you can be, or you are a professional mason or carpenter, you can be a professional physician or economist or banker or whatever the case may be. So that, that I think, is a very, very important program. Um, this, the, it's called the YES program. You may see, have seen the advertisements that have come out. Registration has begun in East uh, Tobago for um, the meeting next week. I think they started today and will continue in various villages in Tobago such that we could, in fact, have a conversation with uh, many young people and begin the placement process. Let me say also that some of this placement has already begun in the Division of Health and Social Services and also in the Division of Finance. And we are also, as we speak, engaging the private sector to ensure that their participation in this, um, 
in this program is real and recognized. Thank you for watching the Tobago House of Assembly's post-executive council media briefing for week ending August 25, 2012. I am Umudara Mills for the Department of Information.